Hello and welcome back to Views on the Road. I'm your host Steph and today we're making nacho cheese. If you've ever had problems with your nacho cheese, this recipe is for you. I'm gonna teach you how to make it silky smooth and make sure to stick around for the end because I'm gonna show you how to make a delicious game day snack. And if you have some smoke coming out of your... You'll need three cups of half and half, three cups of medium cheddar, three cups of white cheddar, one tablespoon of butter, one tablespoon of all-purpose flour, Optional but not necessary, you can add one third of a cup of your jalapeno juice so that you can have that jalapeno flavor in your nacho sauce. Give that a loving mix and let's get started on making our nacho cheese. Place your burner on a medium heat and add your butter. Once you've melted your butter, you're gonna add your all-purpose flour and you're gonna quickly combine your ingredients. Once you combine your ingredients, you wanna make sure to cook an additional 10 to 15 seconds. Next, you're going to add your half and half and combine as you pour. Make sure that everything is well combined while you bring your ingredients to temperature. Once your pot gets really hot and you used your jalapeno juice, you're going to smell that it smells like your um, nacho cheese from the theater. I think you're going to love this one. And now we're ready to add our cheese. We're going to start by adding our white cheddar. When you add your white cheddar, you're going to place your burner on a medium-low heat and start giving it a loving mix. Once you combine your white cheddar, you're going to wait until you see the side of your pan bubbling. That's going to take you another two to three minutes. And this is where you want to add your cheddar cheese. And start mixing until you fully incorporate your cheddar cheese into our delicious white cheese. Ooh, smells so good. <laughs> Once you've combined your cheddar into your sauce, you're going to continue to cook on a medium-low heat. Make sure to come and stir periodically for about three to five minutes. And you'll see that after the three minutes of cooking, uh, you'll start getting more bubbly and you'll start seeing your cheese raise a little bit. And that's when you want to vigorously mix. After the three minutes, I just stayed here mixing because, you know, I love being in the kitchen. I was chatting with my sister, and we have a smooth, perfect cheese. And boom, done. Our nacho cheese is ready. I'm going to set this to the side. I'm going to go and assemble our snack, and when we come back, I'm going to show you what happens when it gets cold. You are going to need as many hot dogs as you want to make. And although we've made these here on the channel today, we're going to show you exactly how Mexican street food is made and how addictive it is because these are going to be so good. And for those of you that don't want to use your hot dogs, not to worry. Get a large potato and you're going to slice it into long strips just like this. You're going to take a paper towel and you're going to soak it. You're going to place it over your potatoes and in your microwave for five minutes. While our potatoes are cooking, I'm going to show you our taco glue. You're going to use all-purpose flour and you're going to add water until you develop a paste. I'm starting off with one tablespoon of all-purpose flour and adding a good amount of water. And keep mixing until you develop a nice thick paste. Our potatoes just, <laughs> there it is, our potatoes just finished steaming in our microwave and I have a pack of tortillas that are a little bit broken and guess what? That's gonna make this recipe even better. So if you have some flimsy tortillas, the ones that keep you know, peeling off in the corners and you're hiding from your family, you wanna use those for this recipe. Ooh, that's hot. Está como los cumbia kings. Ooh, fuego, fuego. <laughs> and your potatoes should be looking like this. Right when they're about to fully cook, you want to take them out. So five minutes is a good time for you guys. <laughs> we keep getting interrupted. Let's, you know what? Let's make these tacos. You're going to line up your tortillas. What works for me to get this process done a lot faster is I give it some space just like that. Just like a good relationship, a good amount of space. <laughs> Where's our space? <laughs> <laughs> we don't need, you, you and I don't need space club. You're going to take your taco glue. And some of you are going to say, I don't need that stuff. I'm a pro. You're going to see why you need this in just a moment. And as I'm doing this, I have my oil ready for me. I've been heating it up on a medium, and I better move quickly. 
If you're feeding a lot of people, you can take your hot dog and slice it down the middle. You make more that way. And you just roll it up. Just like this and set it to the side. And with your thick and juicy potato, you're gonna do the same thing. Roll it up. And I know you probably think, well, Steph's using some Kirkland fancy hot dogs. Not to worry, any kind of hot dog will work for this. It's just that my sister and I are super sisters and we split our Costco groceries. We sure do, it's a lot of fun. A shout out to all of you that love to live in community. Woo. And this is where the fun begins. Ready, you're gonna cut your taquitos into three. And set them to the side. Remember, I said they don't have to be beautiful. Even if they're all falling apart, your tortillas, this is a perfect recipe for that. I'm going to do the same with the rest, and I'll meet you at the fryer. With a wooden chopstick or a wooden spoon, you're going to test your oil. Once you see it bubbling, that means that we're ready to fry. And if you have some smoke coming out of your pan, slow your roll. You're going to wait till that temperature cools about 15 to 30 minutes because I really don't know how high you were <laughs> cooking your oil and you're going to have to start over. But we're ready to fry. And you're going to continue to fry until all your taquitos are nice, golden and crispy. Even with my hot sexy oil here, you guys, it took me about six to eight minutes to fry all of these. You wanna wait until they're crispy. When you hear it sound like a cardboard, take them out, especially for game day. And what you wanna do on your part to perfect this for game day is you wanna turn your oven up to 150 to 175 degrees. That's gonna keep your taquitos nice and crispy. But if you fried your taquitos and they're a little bit soft and you put them in the oven, don't expect them to crisp up. It's not gonna happen. You have to put them in there crispy so they can stay crispy just like your tia. <laughs> your tia Claude, I'm not saying any other tia. <laughs> I'm not throwing shade at you, Claude. I like to be cold crispy. <laughs> and for added flavor, I like to sprinkle a little bit of salt, like if it's your french fries, give it a little shake. And I'm gonna continue frying up the remaining taquitos. But he lives out of state, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> His virtual lonche. His virtual lonche. <laughs> As you can see, our cheese got nice and cold. It's still smooth, but it's time to heat it up. So you're gonna put your burner on a medium low heat. Okay? Oh, that's the wrong one. And you're just gonna warm it up again. Unless you're using a crock pot, then you don't have to worry about this step. But if I take the crock pot out right now, I'm gonna wanna make a roast and... We've been on a roast kick. <laughs> we have. Oh, these potato ones are smelling delicious. Yummy, yummy. <laughs> if you run out of tortillas and you have some of your ingredients left, you just wanna fry them right up. You're gonna use these to sprinkle over the top. And your cheese should just melt right up and stay nice and smooth. Let me show you. So this means that for those of you that wanna make this ahead, you can place it in a Tupperware, put it in your refrigerator, and then warm it right back up when it's go time. And these remaining bits are just the confetti to what we're about to make. And you're gonna treat your taquitos just like you would your American nachos. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Uh. When you try this recipe, you're gonna notice that your nacho cheese is a little bit lighter than you would buy from a can or get at your store. The reason is because we use white and medium cheddar, but let me tell you, it's absolutely delicious and worth going out of the way with your white cheddar cheese. And these are one of those dishes that you should be looking away because once I start, I don't stop. Mmm. I'm one of those moms that games with their kids, and this right here, it's super easy. It doesn't interfere with our gaming. I can go in, get it done, and continue having fun with my kids. So let me know if you're a gaming mom and what kind of snacks you like to have. Mm. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. We hope you love our nacho cheese and have an amazing game day. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. 
Bye. Adiós.